In-game, four bad bunnies, cavalry, and archer force attempted to kite Gojira's Zinch. However, a counter fire from Kairos and Zinchian tricks isolating the dragon princes meant that the high elf kite struggled to be effective, and in the end, the Lothurn Sea Guard ended up being run down by Forsaken and Kairos himself. Definitely, I like the pick of the Dragon Princes and Imric for sure. The shields, though, interestingly, on Lothar and Seaguard slow them down, so it is a trade-off, although it will help them defend against pinks and blues. Shooting did allow them to be, ca be caught by even the Zinchian Marauders here, which is definitely something to be aware of when you're trying to pull off a kite build like this. Now let's move on to Game 5. Which leaves us with nothing but sand on that blood grounds of glory that is MP Crossroads. Gojira now leading his Cornate forces in a final showdown against Urian's Skaven. And I gotta say, bringing a Bloodthirster, especially against a Skaven, seems like a very ballsy move. But let's look at the rest of his build here. Valkia also for some more anti-large flying. More anti-large on the ground here with two minotaurs of corn and then a front line of marauders, just five of them. Got some warhounds and flesh hounds out on the flanks, fury in the sky here. And uh, yeah, some more hounds and flesh hounds and such over there for the Skaven side. They've gone with quite the array of single entities, although I'm not the biggest fan of this specific composition. Deathmaster Snitch, Warlock Engineer, Gorich. A Mutant Rat Ogre and a Hell Pit Abomination alongside Warp Grinders. They've got Council Guard, Clan Rat Spears, <clears throat> Avalanche Mortars, Eshin Triads. That's pretty much it. Of course, the Mortars are going to be very brutal against any Cornet Infantry. Though, in general, taking Elite Heavy Infantry against this Gaiman is pretty much never I a good idea in my opinion. Um, so just best to let the Marauders take the brunt of this damage as they approach. They'll get exploded into bloody little bits there. I don't know. Does Corn like when people get exploded into bloody bits? You lore, lore heads will have to let me know about that, but <clears throat> certainly it's going to be happening to these guys right here. And a little bit of uh, Cleansing Ruin going to be cast here. Doesn't do a lot given the Demon Shield, especially on Valkia and the Magic resistance on both of them. Spell resistance is going to just straight up reduce that damage by 25%. So, I don't know. I might go with, actually, the, the uh, other lore of magic in this particular matchup. Hard to say. Uh, for, like, summons and just additional numbers. But uh, right now, the Fury is the Hounds are going to dive into the back line. Try and get on these Avalanche Mortars. There's a quick response from the Skaven to shut that down immediately. All those units are just going to be torn to shreds, but a nice spear slop near through the center of the Council Guard. And Gojira is being really smart here in that he's not over committing the Bloodthirster like right into this blob. Same with Valkia. He's kind of patiently trying to pick away at all of these units on the periphery, get rid of the support structure, especially these avalanche mortars if he can, but just like route off all the Clan Rat Spears and Skaven Slaves and other non elite non-essential units get them out of the way first so that then he can deal damage to what actually matters nice friendly fire there from the avalanche mortars as they also kill a bunch of marauders but the low leadership of these low tier skaven units means that corn can just rush them off the field very quickly and that is exactly what we see happening here with the combination of marauders and dogs and of course the bloodthirsters terror We're now gonna see what i've actually didn't know I wanted, but I actually do now, is uh, Bloodthirster versus Gorich, although the Minotaurs are going to come in here and make this somewhat of an unfair fight. I think Gojira, I mean, I know he watches my videos, at least occasionally, so I don't know if he's seen a lot of me featuring Gorich recently and kind of talking him up, but definitely seems like he was well prepared for him. Plenty of anti-large AP, and even just the Minotaurs would probably be enough to deal with Gorich, but it's as if that was an overkill, here comes the Bloodthirster. Just pushing past the Minotaurs, yelling, he's mine. But uh, anyway, yeah, Minotaurs are going to continue to follow up there as well. If we check back in with Valkia, he's dueling it out with Snitch here in the center with the uh, Warp Grinders doing their thing. A lot of the support units for Corn are starting to evaporate as well, but the demons remain 
flesh hounds, of course. We've got one unit of marauders also still hanging around. And the minotaurs looks like have taken some significant damage, but still plenty of combat power left. So as Gorich tries to flee to his uh, big mama here, the Hell Pit Abomination, uh, it looks like it's fighting Valkia. Kind of slow to react anyway in terms of its animations and turn speed, so it's not going to be the most... Uh, full of reinforcements, but certainly the Skaven have formed into their absolute doom blob, which should have helped them survive. It's going to be a lot harder for those single entities to get surrounded when they're bunched up like this, which is why monster blobbing unfortunately is so effective, as much as some people hate it. But uh, you know who else hates monster blobbing? Is uh, Horn, because he hates everything. So the Bloodthirster will channel that hatred into trying to finish Gorich off here, and he is getting dangerously low. And we come back again to the composition of this specific set of Skaven single entities. I really think you need a Lord level caster here and take a Packmaster to be able to heal in a situation like this. Of course, the Hellpit Abomination has its own innate healing, but Gorich, the mutant rat ogre, could have greatly benefited from some of that passive healing. Of course, that would require you taking a caster Lord, Alternately, you could switch Snitch out for... What's his name? I don't even remember because people rarely take him these days. But uh, really, I think the Packmaster is the best option. Especially because he also gives you another single entity potentially for the pile. Depending on how you want to kit him out. But uh, anyway, another nice spear slop. Nier is going to just whiff on those Eshin Triads. I do appreciate the attempt. And things are actually closer than they seem, but this grind blob fight is 100% going in Korn's favor. They already finished off the Hell Pit Abomination. Gorich is done. Now it's just a matter of finishing off uh, Snitch and these triads and whatnot. The Mutant Rat Ogre running for the hills. And the Hounds are here to chase. Looking like it's going to be from... Completely defeated to a full reverse sweep by Gojira, finishing off with a beautiful Bloodthirster replay, which is not something you get to see every day. Certainly something I greatly appreciate. Bloodthirster is probably one of the coolest designs, kind of classic, huge hulking demon design. Doesn't get enough use, in my opinion, considering how cool it is. I kind of get why. It is quite expensive for what it gives you, but this Bloodthirster has more or less accomplished its goal. Got I think it's paid for itself. We'll have to double check. What are they, 2100? So maybe not quite, but I mean, close enough to be tactically useful. And uh, of course, Valkia and the Minotaurs also contributing nicely. So let's go ahead and check out all the damage values as Gojira takes the win there. And good games to both players. Nice back and forth series. Um, I say back and forth. It was, like I said, completely defeated in a full reverse sweep from Gojira's perspective, but. Both the Minotaurs did fantastically, and then the Bloodthirst are also these three elite anti-large units. Definitely well needed for Gorich, the Rad Mutant Rat Ogre, and the Hell Pit Abomination. They had a lot of value to get through just between these three units. So then, of course, the Flesh Hounds and the Furies, the regular Doggos, all helping to clean up a lot of these other kind of support Skaven units. Super critical. And then, yeah, even uh, one... Marauder of Corn getting 600 value, which is not something you see every day. Usually they just die horribly, which, to be fair, most of them did. But uh, Warlock Engineer, kind of, people kind of forgot. I think he had the Warp Shard armor there, so he was getting more or less, like, uh, a Mortis effect the whole time. Also had some good Flensling Ruins, but I don't know. I still think it's better off to go with, if you're going to do a Golden Monster Blob, you definitely need that healing Packmaster. Especially for the units that don't have it already, but even stacking it on top of the Hellpit Abomination's base regeneration, quite useful. None of these Molder monsters paid for themselves, and I think that's a big part of why this build didn't work out here for Orion. I do like the Avalanche Mortars here, though. They weren't quite able to pay for themselves, but had they been a little bit better protected, maybe they could have. Hard to do so when you have so few units, though. That is one of the problems with going with such a heavy monster mash, but... Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It's a great series. Looking forward to sharing uh, more videos with you all soon. I should have a stream tomorrow for community replays because I've got quite a lot to get through before the Chaos Dwarfs arrive. So look for that tomorrow. Subscribe for more, including the Chaos Dwarfs. Be sure to hit that bell notification so when I upload those videos, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.